Um, there's two different ways that we, we go about predicting avalanches, and they work in unison. Um, we look at our weather forecast, and then we look at the, the snowpack and the structure within the snowpack. And specifically, we're looking for weak layers in the snowpack. Um, and then with the weather, we're looking for what the weather is going to bring us, say, in the next 12 to 24 hours, how much precipitation we're expecting, and what type of precipitation, is it snow or rain? and then what the temperature is going to do. I think a lot of people don't realize how we yeah. do our job just in general yeah. or they think of the artillery yeah, you know, because exactly. it does stand out. Yeah. Okay, so we, we've looked at our, at our snowpack and our, and our weather forecast and we've determined that avalanche control or an avalanche threat is, is imminent. Um, what we do at that point is, is schedule avalanche control uh, with our, our maintenance personnel and determine the, the location and the time that we're going to do avalanche control. That way they can be ready to stop traffic and clear the highway. In the meantime, we're up on the top of the slope and uh, we deploy explosives out into the avalanche path. And when we get the all clear for maintenance, we detonate them and cause an avalanche. We have these, a system of trams um, around the pass on our avalanche paths. And these trams allow us to deploy the explosives out into the avalanche path, keeping us in a safe location. The other advantage is that we can sometimes um, deploy several shots at once and bring those, tie those back together using a detonating cord and when we um, ignite it, we'll detonate multiple paths at once. So we get more work done in a very short amount of time. Then, then we have a number of other tools we use. Uh, for weather forecasting and weather information, we have a, a system of uh, telemetered or radio linked weather stations throughout the pass, both at low elevation and high elevation. We have certain tools we use to measure the snow. Very simple, a shovel, um, a saw, a probe, and, uh, and then some instruments that we use to measure the density or the water content in the snow. Then, of course, the, the tools we use, and you see Joe Snow here. Um, he has a variety of, of the instruments we use, skis, boots. Uh, we have a snow cat and to get us in, into these locations. The biggest thing that we do to reduce the inconvenience to our drivers is, uh, is to try and do as much of the avalanche control at night. This is something that we've made an emphasis for the last several years last couple of years and uh, this will be our third year where we run it we actually run a night shift of avalanche forecasters and our goal is to try and do as much of that avalanche control at night as I said about about doing the night control we do that whenever possible but weather doesn't always cooperate with us and there are times we're gonna have to do control work during the day during peak travel and people should always be prepared for delays when they cross the pass <laughs>